Hey nerds, we are out here playing Stellaris. Um, this is my first run that I've been recording, so uh, you're going to get to see it. And we're all going to be going through it at the same time. I want to take you through my uh, empire before we get started with anything else. Um, this run is classical, kind of kind of regular mainstream liberalism. Um, so that's pretty standard egalitarian, xenophile, pacifist. Um, we're going with a more idealized version of it than a sort of in practice and execution version because uh, Stellaris is about political simulation and uh, we're going to try to live up to that ideal as much as we can. This is my uh, my species, the uh, the Tux people. These cute little penguin guys. Um, for traits, we've got uh, Thrifty, which is extra trade value. Conformists, which is extra governing ethics attraction. Those are our good ones. Our bad ones are we don't live super long. And uh, we're not very good at lifting heavy objects. And we're hoping we're going to be able to get through life that way. Uh, just fine. Home planet is Quishfeld. Home star Thalarmy. Um, and the name of the empire is the Alliance of Quishfeltic Republics, which represents that notion of like, hey, you know, we're all in this together. Um, but there's still plenty of diversity in the uh, in all the the Tux people in our lives. For government ethics, again, we are going with uh, xenophile, pacifist, and egalitarian. Xenophile, that's going to get us um, a lot of restrictions versus vis-a-vis uh, -vis what we can do with aliens, um, but it is going to give us cheaper diplomacy and uh, less expense and um, less expense diplomacy, and it's going to get us additional trade value. That's going to combine with our uh, racial species to give us just a bajillion trade value. Pacifist is going to give us a slight ad cap bonus. That's probably not going to matter all that much. But it is going to give us a big ol' hit to stability. We're going to get a ton of stability from that. Um, that's a global empire-wide modifier, and that's, that's going to apply to all our planets, and that's going to be super useful. Um, egalitarian gives a special living standard. That's not going to matter in the early game, but hopefully it's going to matter later on. Um, I am going to have, as one of our goals, to get to universal utopian living standards basically by say year 50 I'm going to try to achieve that um, egalitarian gives us extra influence from factions and extra output from specialists which is pretty strong that's going to uh, help us to compensate a little bit for our reduced uh, global worker output from our uh, being not super strong civics we have free haven that's going to give us a ton of immigration pull and pop growth from immigration um Again, that notion of open doors gives you free, you're yearning your hope. I think I actually quotes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tired of the poor, the huddled masses, you're to breathe free, all that. Um, all that Statue of Liberty, all the silent stuff. So that's uh, something we're getting. Uh, the other is Idealistic Foundation. AOE, 5% happiness bonus. Um, and that's what that's for. Again, not necessarily a super optimized build, but good for role playing. Uh, we are obviously going to be playing a democracy, and that's going to give us the government-type moral democracy. Uh, this government is a pacifistic form of democracy, firmly guided by moralist principles and nonviolence. So we're hoping that's going to take us far in space! Um, our, our, uh, our ruler title is Chancellor of the Exchequer, and our current ruler is uh, Harps Gopping. And we're doing that because we're uh, hoping that being adorable will be useful to us. So, let's all get started. Um, for this, we're going to do a big old galaxy. We're going to be a uh, spiral two arms, like our galaxy is. Moderate number of AI empires. I, regular number of habitable worlds, regular number of all this other stuff. I like playing with primitive civilizations. I think that content is a riot, so I have them way up high. I'm going to play an instant difficulty because I'm just here relaxing by myself. Um, this is not a game that I, at least at this point in my Stellaris career, I'm not trying to get good at it. Um, all the regular stuff is on. We're not turning off any weird content. Anyway, let's get into it. Get us started here. 
Um, so again, goals are uh, utopian abundance by year 50 for all species, and uh, we're going to try and get into a federation. We're going to try to do all that, all that good guy stuff. Um, so this is going to be a little new and different for me. For those of you who know me, I am I am I am not a player who uh, goes with the pacifist run often. So this is going to be new and interesting. In the eons since the first primitive Tuxpapal communities took shape on the snow fields and ice caves of Quishfelt, our civilization has spread and prospered. As we advanced through the technological eras, ages, we also matured as a species. The violent and base impulses we inherited from our ancestors were done away with, and a global government was formed on the principles of peaceful coexistence. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of the Alliance of Gushveltic Republics have finally de finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. So we're going to get started here. Um, right away, we're just going to pop over to our policies, uh, food policy, nutritional policy. Um, that's going to make our pops cost a little more food. It's going to make them happier, and it's going to make them grow faster, and that's just super, super strong. Uh, there's no way around that. This is really powerful. We're going to do that first thing. Construction ship. We are going to get this built. We need more minerals. Anyone who's played StarCraft, you know that's the case. Uh, techs. Initial techs. Ooh, we got a Spark of Genius. Nice. And we need two adaptive people. All right, so, so Spark of Genius for physics. Do we want that person on physics? We'll see. I'm um, going to go with quantum theory here. Nice, solid research boost. Um, if I were going a more aggressive route, I would definitely... Well, I would maybe spring for improved deflectors quickly, but I don't know. But this time, we're going to go with quantum theory. Increase that research output. Um, ooh, biodiversity is tempting, but I want genome mapping. Pop growth speed is, is your lifeblood in this game. Um, pop growth, pop growth, pop growth, pop growth. Pop growth every day, pop growth every way. Uh, ooh, what do we have here? It's going to be either nanomechanics or powered exoskeletons. I do love the idea of going for robots early, um, which powered exoskeletons will allow us to do. Um, so it's not a super strong tech by itself, but it does give us that capability. Um, that said, we will need to get a couple of our, of our nearby planets colonized and get some... Uh, our, 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 mineral growth stabilized before we want to go that way. So actually I'm going to go with nanomechanics. Just going to go with research speed for those. And uh, for a science ship, let's take a look at what we've got around us. Nice. Interesting. Okay, so we've got a good solid border here. We've got borders here. We're probably going to end up going past this way, but um, for the moment, let's take a look at what we've got over here. That'll set us going. Um, while all this is getting done, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Stellaris is about. Mm. I'm so thirsty. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what, about what Stellaris is about. Stellaris's primary mechanic is what you could refer to as engine building for the board gamers out there. Um, that means you get uh, low-level resources, and you convert them into higher-level resources to output the interesting stuff you need. Your baseline resources are e-creds, minerals, food. Um, those are produced in uh, generator, min uh, mining, and agricultural districts, respectively. Uh, minerals are going to... Food is used by pops, energy credits are used by buildings... Uh, and districts. So all of those are needed for your sort of baseline work to get done. Uh, minerals, however, are a little different. Minerals are the building blocks of districts. Um, these icons here are... Uh, this requires 300 minerals and 240 days. And that's how long it takes to build. Um, now the building blocks for your districts, and that's going to be... Uh, so it's so you don't have you don't necessarily have uh, oh there we go hooray um, so you don't necessarily spend minerals in that way uh, as much as other resources but you do need to shell out a bunch of them all at once in order to build for example this 
uh, mining station that I'm trying to get built on Glump here that I'm waiting on having 100 minerals for. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Sorry, a little maniacal. It's, I haven't done this in a minute. Um, minerals are going to convert into our two higher level resources, consumer goods and alloys. Consumer goods are going to be the building blocks for all the really high tier resources. Um, especially, specifically Unity and Research. Um, those Unity Research and Amenities, which is uh, the equivalent to Happiness in this game. Those are both going to be uh, converted from consumer goods. Uh, alloys, on the other hand, are used to build spaceships, which is just a critical part of your uh, early expansion in any game of Stellaris. Um, and then it's even more critical later when you got to fight wars. Um, I almost always go... Whoa, hang on, hang on, hang on. The ISS Urgi Gluha has made a startling find on Wanambis 3. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we've encountered life forms that did not originate on Quishfeld. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Wanambis 3 are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out here. Cool. Cool, we found aliens. Um, I almost always go with an alloy foundry for my first building. Oh, super habitable. Nice. Um, I'm going to explain why that matters in a second. I almost always go for an alloy foundry for my first building um, because I like having just massive alloy output. Oh, look at this. The Alliance of Quishfeldic Republics is abuzz with the news of alien organisms discovered some time ago. These little evolutionary marvels kindle in the tux poply people a renewed hope of first contact with intelligent beings. Intriguing. Um, I always like to have spare alloys. I love having a lot of alloys. That's just, I, I, I just, I love having it. Uh, oh, wow, look at this. Uh, during its survey of Wanambis 5, the ISS Urgigluha discovered several exotic gases previously unknown to us. These gases have a variety of different uses, particularly in the operation of advanced energy-based weaponry and force fields. Some of the gases can also be used as starship fuel or even as recreational drugs. Nice. All right, uh, while we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. Way ahead of you, advisor friend. Construction um, complete. Yeah. Oh, gotta get you doing more work. Uh, you can queue this up, but uh, not the first ones. So one ambus is the the first system we're serving. Let's just take a look at that here. This is our habitable planet, one ambus three, in Arctic world. We're Arctic people. We we we're penguins. So penguin people. So we love living in Arctic places. Um, a class M star. This common stars in the universe often referred to as wet red dwarfs. Their low luminosity means they're difficult to observe the naked eye from afar. Although they typically have an extremely long lifespan, red dwarfs emit almost no ultraviolet light, resulting in unfavorable conditions for most forms of life. Interesting. Um, and we got a, so so yeah so we got a, a lovely little system here. We got some energy available here, and ah, this is a toxic world. That's why we've got exotic gases available on it. Um, this is our science ship surveying. Uh, this is the last, oh, second to last planet here. My name is 4 and my name is 4A. Um, probably we are going to immediately colonize this world as soon as we can. Um, once our science ship has built everything it needs to build. I am always going for early colonization. I think that's a good strategy. Um, Construction complete. Like I was saying, I often go with um, with filling this first slot with an ally foundry. I think I'm still going to do that in this play. Um, am I going to do that? I definitely want to get a new science ship out. I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm building a second science ship. This is going <laughs> the Gluckator class. System survey complete. Excellent. Um, this is just to increase our exploration speed. Um, it is going to require an investment of 200 energy credits to get myself a new scientist. Um, so that is going to be a little bit expensive, and it may delay the construction of our first colony ship. All that being said, I still think it's a good play. Um, I think it's critical that you explore as much of the nearby area as you can, and that you not get sidetracked uh, 
and that you not get too sidetracked with anomalies. Anomalies are fun and they reveal useful stuff, but you shouldn't. You should focus on surveying in the early game so that you can get a sense of again what's kind of in your neighborhood here. Um, surveying. Complete. Excellent. Hey, on just a moment here. We're gonna pick out. Our, we're gonna get ourselves a new scientist. So, uh, do we have? Okay, we've got a spark of genius person here. Definitely gonna do that. No question, I'm gonna do that. Um, spark of genius is just a global 10% research speed. Uh, if you notice, Albert Einstein little here is maniacal. It's 5% research speed. Um, but if you got spark of genius people, you almost always want to recruit them if you can. Um, and actually, what we're going to do is we're gonna look at our research and we're gonna replace one of these fellas. One of these people here with someone who's got the spark of genius. That's actually going to be, I think, our uh, society researcher. I want to get plenty of society research. Um, society research is going to go fast uh, only a little later in the game, but uh, for now we want to get it going as fast as we can. Now this has got the ISS <laughs> Blurpater. Ah, oh, I love the adorable uh, name set. Um, the ISS Blurpater is going to get over here surveying this world. Um, you always want to survey your neighboring world, uh, your, your worlds, your neighboring systems as soon as you can. Um, surveying is a prerequisite for colonization, um, or for 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 expansion. That is, building these starbase outposts, which are your main mechanism, your only mechanism for expanding your borders. Um, so you want to get those worlds surveyed as fast as you can. Um, when you are uh, once you've got a starbase built, then you can colonize a planet. As, as you can see, you can only colonize planets inside our borders. That's because we haven't built a starbase yet. Um, by and by, we're going to have enough resources to... Ooh, have a little planet. Arctic world. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure almost universally you will have two worlds of the same type as your home world within one jump of your home system, and that lets you develop a reasonable economy early on in the game. Um... What have we got in terms of minerals? We do want... I'm going to increase the game speed here. I know I said I wasn't going to... Did I? Who knows? Um, I know I thought I wasn't going to, but I'm getting a little bored. So, you know, not a lot Not a lot happens in the early game. We can afford to go a little bit faster. I want to get these alloys accumulated, and I want to get these minerals accumulated. I have decided to go with an alloy foundry, because I'm already feeling the crunch on alloys. This is going to be another eight months before we got enough to build our colony ship, and by then this is going to be completely finished, and we're all going to feel like fools. Um, I went for another early science ship, and I don't regret that, but it does mean we're going to be a little slow here. Still growing. Okay. Um, this is an alley foundry. So as you can see, this building has some energy credits upkeep, but more importantly, it's going to convert just a, a bunch of minerals into... Uh, uh, alloys, and that's going to be uh, again critical to our expansion in the early game. I don't have a lot of buffer here with this stuff. Oh boy! All right. So I'm going to talk about traditions here for a second. Traditions are something you get with certain thresholds of unity. Um, unity is a resource that is developed by your uh, your home world. Uh, it's mostly created by administrator jobs, which are leader-type jobs that come out of capital buildings, um, but your primary source of it getting a little on into the game is going to be either temples or arts than monuments, depending on whether you are a spiritualist or a non-spiritualist or materialist uh, culture. Uh, every time you hit a certain threshold, you're going to unlock a tradition. Those of you who have played Civ Five are going to recognize this system right away. Um, it's exactly the same system, uh, even down to the basic mechanics. You've got an adoption effect, you've got a finisher effect, um, and you've got five options to take inside the uh, inside the tradition. And when you've got them all, you get the finisher effect. All of them unlock an ascension perk slot, so that's something you need to consider when comparing the uh, the uh, traditions. Um, those are these, and we'll talk about those a little later. For now, we're going to go with expansion. It's always the one you get at the beginning. Uh, I don't know of a single build that goes for anything else, except for people who go for a very, very early Federation. Complete. But I think that's kind of a misplay. That's my own. Did I want to do that? Not exactly. Well, we're okay. We're okay. 
That'll give us some energy credits, and that's a good thing. Another four months, colony ship. Well, another four months, alloy foundry, and after that, colony ship. Uh, then it's going to be a hot minute before we get our, our next colony ship, but uh, that's all right. That's not necessarily a problem. Um, we are going to have this ship go here first. This is not a super rushable area. I think we're going here and then here. Again, you want to try to get out to as many of your sort of choke points as you can. That's why I colonized this area first. Um, because you want good solid borders. Uh, having solid borders will make you more difficult to attack. And it will uh, relieve any border tension you might have with nearby empires to a certain extent. Um, border tension is not an enormous problem. Um, but it's always best to keep diplomacy as smooth as you can, complete. and in order to do that, you want to keep your borders as secure as possible. Alright, here we go. Colony ship. Tuxpopple. Yeah, we're called Tuxpopples. That's, uh, it's, uh, courtesy of me being a pawns for, found. uh, anything cute. Oh, it's 400. It's not 300, it's 400. I'm a ponce. Well, that's okay. Um, let's see what's over here. Cool, look at all these worlds. Barren world, barren world, barren world, toxic world, frozen world, barren world. Neat. Class K star. These main sequence stars, sometimes referred to as orange dwarfs, are a fairly common sight. They are stable at the main sequence for up to 30 billion years, meaning that worlds orbiting a K-type star have a longer than average window to evolve life. Interesting. And we are just having this fella just wait around and enjoy life System here on this K-type star. The ISS Gluckle Dorinator. Perfect. I love that. Alright, getting this Alloy Foundry built. Um, Alloy Foundries and other buildings do not just convert resources by themselves. Uh, they need to be worked. And that's another one of the core mechanics here. Oh, we're growing. Oh, we're going to have unemployment. Oh, that's going to be really sad. But we'll end up having to live with it for a little bit. Um, this is our population. Uh, it is 100% Tux people. And uh, it is divided into three strata. Rulers, specialists, and workers. Um, specialist jobs are provided by the... Er, worker jobs, sorry. Worker jobs are provided largely by these districts. Um, which are sort of areas of a planet set aside for working in particular types of basic resource generation type work. Um, actually... There's not that much here. I'm going to have you go over here so we can get this in our borders as soon as we can. Um, each of these, so the, the, as you can see here, we got we got open slots and filled slots. System and that's survey complete. The, this UI I actually think is really well designed. Um, I just want to call that out because this is this is a good UI is so important for making things easy to understand. Um, Total number of available districts, number cut off by blockers. We'll talk about blockers later. Um, each of these each of these districts that's been filled, that's is that's a district that's been built. That's going to provide two jobs in the worker stratum. Um, so you notice we've got two of each of these districts, so we've got four of each of these types of jobs. And these jobs uh, only generate resources. Uh, that's what they do. They generate resources. They don't they don't cost anything. These specialist tier jobs are provided by our buildings. Uh, research labs, which turn consumer goods into research. Oh, boy. Neat. Sorry, I'm skipping a lot, but yeah, I'm trying to give you a sense of how this works. Um, alloy foundries, which turn minerals into alloys. And civilian industries, which turn consumer go uh, which turn minerals into consumer goods. Um, again, consumer goods are the uh, building blocks of research at a research lab. Um, planetary administration does not pr cost any consumer goods. Uh, they're also going to be used for a handful of other buildings. Do we have enough? Yes, we do. 
Um, you're also going to notice this other resource influence. Oh, got another habitable planet. Tundra World. Okay, close. Very close to what we have. Good. Good. Good place to expand. Um, the, oh, man. Look at this. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, in uh, Till 6A, that's... Uh, where is that? That's over here. Uh, this is a precursor event chain, so I'm going to read this to you here. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient civilization on Tile 6A. Incredibly, this civilization, which apparently referred to itself as the, quote, Cybrex, unquote, seems to have made up of machines. They were linked together in some sort of collective consciousness. The age of the artifacts indicate they were active some 600,000 years ago, in this portion of the galaxy at least, but we've learned nothing of their exact origins. According to a partial data fragment that our scientists managed to extract from one of the artifacts, the Cybrex at some point launched a crusade to destroy all sapient life in the galaxy for reasons unknown. Interesting. Um, this is going to give us a uh, precursors to Cybrex event chain. Situation log updated. Um, by the way, I want you to... Those of you who, who have uh, the vanilla game... Complete. Oh, man. Golly, so much going on here. Alright, we, uh, we just got our colony ship, uh, so I'm going to get her going over here. We've got a new... Yes, Tuxpopoli xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the recent findings of alien life. The fevered storm in the scientific community has had some negative, yet temporary, impact on pursuits in their fields. That's not a real thing. That didn't actually happen. At least, functionally, it did not. Um, what do we want to name our new planet? The ISS Gleg Glop is on its way there. Let's name it something adorable. Let's name it... Quimble. We're gonna name it Quimble. Because we're here having a good time. Uh, sorry. What I was saying was, uh, the Cybrex thing puts together an event chain. We gotta find six artifacts of the Cybrex. Those are gonna be almost universally hidden under complete. high, uh difficulty anomalies. What are anomalies? They're those events that have been popping up that I've been saying, leave this be for now. I pretty much do that by, uh, by default now. Not because I think anomalies are not, are not, are not useful or anything, but just purely on the basis of, like, I don't, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the time. Uh, our science ships are very, very busy ships, and we want to do as much with them as we can, as fast as we can, and in order to do that, we've got to get them moving. Um, we just finished our alloy foundries, which means our alloy production has skyrocketed significantly, um, but that has in turn led to a drop in our Anomaly mineral found. growth. Yep, that's that thing. I bet you that's the side. Oh, man. Hi. A colony ship has gently touched down in the snowfields of Quimble in a deep valley near the equator. The landing site nestled within a large mountain chain and is well protected. The landing site is nestled within a large mountain chain and is well protected against the elements. The ship has per been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement, and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first Tuxpopple city on an alien world. A great day for the Alliance of Quishveltic Republics. And we get some uh, engineering research here. Um, now, Quimble is going to go through a period of colonization before it becomes a real planet that can be used and everything. So, that's going to be a hot minute before we get anything else. I think I'm not going to do any more expansion for, this, for the moment because I want to generate... Uh, the alloys needed to create a second colonization complete. ship. Um, and that takes 200 alloys, 200 consumer goods, and 200 food. Um, one of the more interesting capabilities you can get if you're... Oh, man, hang on. Hold that thought. Habitable World Survey. We know nothing. We know... We now know, without a doubt, 
We know nothing, John Snow. We now know without a doubt that, there, that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Quishfeld. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to, learn, eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing worlds. So we can get a little influence, or we can start this event chain, and I think this event chain is rad, so I'm going to do it. Situation log Kaboom. updated. I'm going to talk about influence in a second. What I was saying was, uh, one of the things you can get if you're a megacorp is the capacity to build um, private colony ships, which are, uh, instead of costing 200 alloys, a, a tier 2 research resource, 200 consumer goods, a tier 2 resource, and 200 food, a tier 1 resource, those colony ships take exactly 500 energy credits, a tier 1 resource, which is a very, very strong ability. Um, in fact, we've got the capacity to get one of those built right now. We have a new tradition available, and we can get either Reach for the Stars or Colonization Fever. I'm going to go with Reach for the Stars, because um, I want to get those uh, reduced influence cost star bases. So what is influence? Influence represents basically your civilization's capacity to go, hey, this is mine. Um, it's other stuff as well, but it, it's, it's the, it's, it's, for those of you who have played there's a lot going on here. Um, hold that thought. I'm going to continue explaining influence after this. An ancient space station of some kind has been located in the edge of the Rigor system. Where is that? I don't, I don't know where this is. is. We'll, we'll find, find it for you in a minute. Oh, let's use this. It's, it's somewhere out there. there. Amazing. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but we'll, we'll find out soon. Edge of the Rigor system, system. strong as dual subspace station that surrounds, surrounds the station, indicates that it may be a gateway source, a port, a part of a theoretical network of similar stations that at some point would have allowed for near and instantaneous travel to different parts of the galaxy. Assuming this is a gateway, its current state is repaired and rendered it unusable. If it could be restored to working order, its owner would potentially be able to access any other functional gateway in the galaxy, and it would travel across new distances in a matter of days. Intriguing. Where is it? Oh, oh here's the Oh, man, I completely forgot we were down here. Um, sorry. Influence represents the uh, <laughs> political clout. Thanks. Um, represents the, yeah, the, the, the political might of the leadership of your civilization. Um, what does that mean? It means... It's a little bit difficult to explain. Its primary cost in the early game is complete. built is uh, claiming new uh, systems. I guess political clout's a fair description of what it means. Before I forget to do this, I'm going to build a new mining district here. Get our mineral output up. Um, it's built off of Hearts of Iron 4's political power system. Oh, look, another planet. Continental world. Okay, not super habitable for us, but that's okay. Um, this is where I'm going to beeline uh, before I go back and, and do other uh, survey stuff. And the reason that I'm doing that is because we got to get our near borders secured. We don't want aliens uh, claiming these systems because those are very close to us and that will represent some serious potential problems in terms of border integrity if we have that. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in the Rigor system. Hang on, I want to show you that thingy. Disabled gateway. Here it is. Look at, look at, look at, all, look at all this look at all this Mass Effect garbage. Yeah. Alright. A lot of worlds in the Rigor system. We got, we got four planets with moons. Leaders leveling up. That's just leaders leveling up. We don't need to look at that. Um, what's on till? We're building until what's on till? Oh, look at this! Class B stuff! Construction complete. The large so oh. Just get, get this construction here. The large class B main sequence stars are very bright and blue. Although somewhat rare, the luminosity of these stars makes them among 
the most visible to the naked eye. Interesting. Um, this is a very fertile world, uh, molten world here, that we're getting all these minerals out of. Um, so that's just something we wanted to get to right away. Uh, Thalamy Station pretty much done with our colony ship. So we're going to get that underway. That's going to pop up down here in just a second. Complete. Huzzah. Till, er, we don't want this go here. We want this. Complete. I mean, it's on its way in the right direction here. Corals. What do we want to call this world? This lovely Arctic world complete. that's nearby. What if what if we did what if we called it what if we called it happiness but it was some goofy adorable alien word for ha word for happiness I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna call it leppiness yeah there we go perfect I did it oh I'm full of stupid accomplishments all right um, I do also want to get another science ship going uh, because. We are rapidly uh, having more directions to explore than we have science ships. Oh, this is so tight here. If we get this world, we will have all of this, and that will be a happy time. Oh, I don't know. Anomaly found. Oh, I'm a very aggressive expander in this game. I, uh, I'm really, I'm really getting, I'm getting that colonization fever that uh, that the the expansion tradition talked about. Complete. Sorry, I want to go back to that to show you what I got Founding and why I did that. Aww. Um, reach for the stars, reduce star base influence cost, but colonization fever is really the one that I'm that I'm going to be reaching for pretty quickly. Um, all new colonies start with one pop, and uh, I'm going to science ship not doing anything. Got to get got to get a scientist for that. Um, our home planet starts with 24 pops, it's now got 26, because we grow fast, but for you... What's that? Friend Einstein over here? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Put him in charge of, uh... What, what do we have? We have Lort and Glumdor. I'm actually gonna replace, uh, Lort with, uh, our new scientist, Glorp. I'm going to replace Glumdor on engineering with uh, Lort, who has the spark of genius, and then uh, Glumdor is going to be who we're going to put on this science ship. Why are all our names so silly? That's a question for experts, not me. Uh, you're going to explore it this way. Um, it's going to get us what we need here. Why am I expanding so aggressively here? Because uh, you really want to cut off anyone who wants to get into your into areas that that you want as yours. You you got to cut them off. And you got to cut them off fast. Um, the AI expands pretty aggressively in the early game. I'm hoping there's not an empire here. Although, given the shape of this, it looks like this might be because this is a very good, strong, defensible area. And if we can get a hold of this then that gives us more or less total control over all of this space. Um, and that's something we want to have. Uh, I know I'm talking about this in a sort of imperialistic way, and that is by design to a certain extent, but remember that high walls do make good neighbors. Um, in Solaris, as well as in many other... Uh, in many other games, and to a certain extent in some civilization, some situations in real life, perhaps. But, um, we're maybe gonna... I mean, you know, we're gonna chill on that one before we go all the way to making that claim. Um, in any case, we're, we're all... In Stellaris, they do. Um, even if you've got angry, aggressive neighbors, they don't necessarily want to go after you right away, especially if you've got a bigger navy than they do. Um, so, uh, d deterrence is going to be an important part of System the early survey game. survey complete. Especially before you get that first technology that increases your naval capacity. You want to get up to your naval capacity as soon as you can. I want to talk about this voice. We are using the, uh, the Xenophile advisor voice. Um, because, again, 
Uh, she's adorable. Research complete. There you go. She actually reminds me of, of a friend of mine uh, from uh, school. But oh, look at this! We got a desert world. Well, we are not going to want to live there, but um, hopefully we will get a migration complete. treaty with an empire that uh, is full of people that might. Um, because that's xenophile gameplay for you. Um, so, uh, some people would want to get another construction ship at this point, and that's a viable technique. I actually don't, though, and the reason is because, again, our capacity to use our construction ship is going to be limited by our uh, stored influence. Now, we do have a world we could colonize, and this is uh, a world with 60% habitability. It's the same, it's in the cold group, which is the group that our homeworlds in. We're, we're an arctic world, and this is a tundra world. The other one in the cold group is alpine worlds. Um, I'm not going to get colonization fever, you get extra pops, and then I'm going to talk about habitability. Um, but it is not exactly the same type as our homeworld. These other two worlds were the same type complete. as our homeworld. And what that means is they provide us with 80% habitability. The notion that you have 100% habitability in your homeworld because that's where you grew up as a species. But uh, on these other worlds, God, there's a lot there. But on these other worlds, you don't necessarily. Do I want to claim Rigor? Yes. I do. Hmm, it's going to take us a long time to get back this way, and I don't want to do that. So, we're going to go here. Um, we're going to go to... System survey complete. That's a good one. I like that one. Alright. Um, habitability represents basically how well adapted your species is to living on that world. 100% habitability uh, is only for your home world and for... Oh, 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 we got aliens. We got aliens. We've encountered some form of alien vessels in the Pua system. These strange objects have been flagged as alpha aliens until we can learn more about them, which we're going to do more or less immediately. Alpha aliens research. It's going to take us 24 months. News of alien ships humming through the ether have reached Quishfeld. In many ways, ending the first chapter in the Book of the Alliance, the Quishfeld Republic's bid for a stellar empire. Intriguing. So we have space friends, and they haven't tried to murder us yet, and that's good. What are you? Oh, man. Gosh, hang on. I mean, I'll just pause the game and we can take a good look at these. Look at these aliens! They're... They're like flying squids! I love them. I've got kind of a jaggy here, but that's okay. I love them. I think they're friends. I think they're space friends. We encountered some form of alien vessels in the Zuffer system. These strange objects have been flagged as beta aliens until we can learn more about them. Interesting. The Zuffer system. Where is that? That's over here. What kind of aliens do we meet over here? Oh, look at all these aliens. Golly. Let's see, we got a certain sort of alien s space station over here, and we got a bunch of st We got some, uh, some, 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 some little, some sort of little alien, uh, Starfleet over here, and... Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm done, I'm done with this bit. This is an alien homeworld. This is the homeworld of a, a player-style empire. So we don't need to survey this, we're gonna get an automatic survey here. Okay, so this is as far as we're going to be able to expand in this direction, basically. Um... The aliens will get very, very upset if you claim the a system that's next to their their homeworld. So we're we're just we're, we're we're done going this way. We're done going this way. Um, we're gonna come back around here. And not worry about that. Um, we're gonna meet them. Do I want to meet them first? Actually, I want to meet them first because they're stop that for now. They're a uh, because they're a player type civilization. They have an AI like a player, as it were, and uh, we want that in our lives. As far as this building slot, that's a notification that we've got some archaeology available. As far as this building slot, what do we want to build up here? Um, I do want to actually increase my civilian industry output. Um, and the reason is because, again, we are it's never too early to start planning, and we are going to go for that... Um, 
that uh, what we, found. we are going to go for that for that again utopian uh, living standards. Um, that's going to cost a lot of consumer goods, but it's going to give us a big happiness bonus. It's going to give us a global uh, output, a global increase in output. Uh, in, in, in job output, and that's going to be very useful to us. Queue up exploration here. I'm going to queue up here. I will go back and survey these, but um, again, surveying is how you get access to, to systems Research to expand complete. to. And that's very important. Um, excellent. Physics research completed. Global energy management, I want that. Um, that lets us build a building that's actually the probably ooh, actually I'm kind of gonna want to build that building here. I'll build it in the thirty pop slot. I'll build in the thirty pop slot. But before I do that, do I want to queue up a new district? I don't, because I want to queue up a district here. And I've only got pretty limited minerals, um, so I do want to increase that mineral out. But this world has a good balance of available survey complete. districts. Uh, Blappiness, but Quimble has an abundance of mining districts available, and that's something I want to get going just as soon as New I can. Frontiers established. Hooray. Um, because again, you need a high mineral upkeep in order for your empire to function. There's just no getting around it. These friends are very close, these space friends over here. Hopefully they're space friends and not space jerks. I would really be very upset if they were space jerks. Um, just in case they're space jerks, I'm going to increase the size of our military just a little bit. Um, and that should be ready to go by the time we have, we have first contact with them. And that should put us all in a good place together. I know we've got so many worlds over here. Is this... Is this, some, this isn't surveyed yet. I didn't finish surveying yet. Wild. Um, again, I'm kind of I'm kind of watching this because I want to get this claimed as soon as I can. Do you have any anomalies? We've got this high level anomaly. This is moderate level anomaly. But again, we haven't finished surveying the rest of this out yet. We're 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 building a kind of a snaky empire, and that's giving yeah, that's giving us coherency issues. Oh, a comet, small celestial object with pronounced gaseous and particulate tails, was recently observed in the Thalarmy system. Its passing was uneventful. Nice. Anomaly found. Um. We have again. Uh, we have we have uh, an issue with empire cohesion. Empire cohesion is something caused by having uh, a lot of external hyperlanes and isolated System systems. System survey complete. Uh, again, that is something we are. Uh, not again, I haven't talked about that yet. Um, that is something complete. we are going to have to remedy in the medium term, but for now, we're just trying to get, again, get our, our borders coherent and not have weird border gorn, which is something that uh, games by this company are very much known for, for those who have played Crusader Kings 2 and, uh, and uh, Hearts of Iron 4 and other Hearts of Iron games, you're going to immediately recognize uh, what will happen if you are not careful about policing your borders and who settles near them. Um, Construction complete. So that's just a fun time. I think what's going to happen is when you we finish surveying here, I'm going to have you come back through and survey all of these systems so that we can... Oh, two plans. Oh, they're both Tundra Worlds. Oh, I want that system so bad! Oh! Yes! Oh, I want that system. Alright. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, we got this built. We built these mining st stations. Then we're gonna immediately speed on over here, uh, claim that system, and that's gonna probably be the extent, actually, of our eastward expansion. And that will give us plenty of time. Uh, that will give us plenty of space to settle. Because we Anomaly love found. Tundra Worlds. They're very close to our home world. We have a 60% habitability. I never finished explaining what habitability does. Oh, such a bad up here. Um, but that's okay. So, habitability, uh, as a percentage, what it does is there's a formula 
for how much s- stuff, uh, energy credits, and and, uh, and and food and consumer goods pops use. Uh, and there's a baseline amount. Because aliens came with us. Um, there's a baseline amount, and then um, it is multiplied by an amount equal to equal to two minus the habitability of the world they live on. So, um, if a world is eighty percent habitable, you are going to be twenty percent extra consumer goods and food. World's only 60% habitable, 40% extra consumer goods and food. They that's why... Oh. want to talk to us. After successfully translating their language, we have established communications with the Mechtpucks Reavers. Diplomatic channels are now open and all hostilities have been terminated. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Mechtpucks Reavers. Fanatical purifiers. Shh, shh, crap. Quick and fear, aliens. Come for your doom approaches. The Mecht... Pucks, Reavers will cleanse the galaxy of every misbegotten Zeon civilization that pollutes it with their presence. Quashfeld shall burn. Okay, well, these guys are 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 up to eleven all the time. How should we respond? Uh, I don't think it really matters how we respond. The news that we've encountered intelligent life for the first time is spreading like wildfire throughout the the alliance of Quashfeld republics. Our citizens are fascinated by these beings, and the media is full of reports and speculation on their culture and society. The revelation that we are not alone in this galaxy is largely meager with celebration on Quishfelt. Like us, the aliens appear to be relative newcomers to the galactic stage, and the level of technology is similar to our own. This is a momentous occasion. Oh my god, they're space jerks. Hey you! Stop being near us. That doesn't matter, they're not going to be mad about that, they're permanently mad about everything. So these space jerks are what are referred to as fanatical purifiers. Um, anyone who's played Warhammer Forty Thousand kind of knows what this is about. Most of the civ- most of the civilizations in Warhammer Forty Thousand are fanatical purifiers. Basically, complete. fanatical purifiers do not engage in diplomacy in any meaningful fashion. They uh, believe that the galaxy is theirs, and everyone else has got to go. Um, we are going to need to war them, and we are going to need to war them sooner rather than later. Um, that's it. For the moment, I'm building up my fleet. I'm probably going to give priority to expanding our star base here so that we can have significant Research defense complete. against these fools. Um, all right, perfect, 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 perfect. What can we get to make ourselves tougher here? Well. Not much. Yep. Some blocker clearance. Construction complete. I am going to talk about blockers eventually. Probably should not have built that now that we've got some, some big angry fanatical purifiers next to us. Ugh. Why do it have to be fanatical purifiers? Fanatical purifiers are a pain. I hate fanatical purifiers. I've played as fanatical purifiers. Um, fanatical purifiers, again, they are. Uh, they don't engage in diplomacy in any meaningful way. Um, they have what the game's systems refer to as uh, genocidal gameplay. Um, their whole shtick is: we're here, we're gonna, we're here, and we're angry, and we're gonna kill you. Um, we we are going to have to do to system do them a murder uh, sometime in the medium term. Uh, and in order to do that, we're going to need to increase our pop growth speed. Um, I am going to move our fleet out to here, just in case they decide to get scrappy really, really early on. The system is looking more tempting all the time. Probably I'm going to cut it once I've gotten this system colonized, and then a little later we can go back through and, and take a look at what else we've got here. Gosh, fanatical purifiers. Just my luck. Just my luck. At least they have adorable planet names. Glow, glow, glow. Um, so I, I love I love their dialogue. Though. Look at this. The mind boggles at the rationalizations you must make for the evolution and continued existence of the Tux Popley race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, this is their opinion of us. It's uh, it's minus a thousand. Why is it minus a thousand? Because they're fanatical purifiers and they hate us. Fanatical purifiers hate everyone. Bloodiness needs a district, and I don't have enough minerals for one. Gosh, gosh darn! I shouldn't have built this generator district, but I need these energy credits, friends. We're we're really low on energy credits. Oh boy, the campaign to elect a new prime minister is underway. That's exciting. Um. Who our Prime Minister is doesn't matter super much in the early game. Um, who's, it's mostly scientists. It's mostly scientists and and some governors and our current leader is running for re-election. Um, none of this matters terribly much. Um, all of these people are perfectly passable rulers. I'm not concerning myself usually with it, and I don't have the influence to really change it. Uh, I want to save my influence for claiming systems, which is something I'm going to do actually a lot of in the short term. So again, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to spend, yep, it's harp scopping. Uh, right. Construction complete. God, what is that? What were you doing before? What were you doing before? Research. Are you on a science ship? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're running low on e-creds, which is not a tragedy. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to sell some consumer goods to cover the difference for the moment, and uh, I'm going to hope that doesn't System survey complete. a problem later. Alright, here we go. Get this claimed. You are going to go back through and survey this system. I know we had another science ship coming to do that, but um, I'm going to get these done as soon as possible because right now we're having some coherency issues which are increasing our empire sprawl, and I don't like to have that. Um, we got to get these areas consolidated and make sure that these, these, these problem people don't get don't start spreading their hegemonism this way. Um, but in any case, we've got this system uh, in the process of being claimed. It'll be claimed shortly. Um, and oh, look at this! A group of investigators have found a hidden factory on Quimble. The building in its state of decay tells of an old civilization, one that excelled at constructing things that stood the test of time. Our population would easily be able to use the facility to add to the colony's production output. Neat. found. That's exciting. There's no way that could be a problem later. The crew we assigned to work at the odd factory on Quimble has disappeared. We could send a new workforce to take their place, or we could raise the facility to the ground and make sure this will not happen again. That's, um, troubling. But, that said, it seems fine. Maybe it will be fine. I wonder if that, I wonder if that will just keep eating workers until I destroy it. We'll find out next time. Construction complete. Oh, well, let's play Stellaris. Um, this is it, friends. This is our sneaky little empire. Uh, I will see you on the other side, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, be, we'll all have fun next time over here on Solaris. Take care, everybody. Good night.